I'd like to introduce our next presentation. We have a double team in Kate Comstock, who is the Life Science Mass Spec Senior Marketing Specialist, and Kyle De Silva, who is the Pharma and Biopharma Marketing Manager. A slightly provocative title, uh, No More Unknowns. Uh, what we are going to be presenting to you today is some new technologies and workflows that have never before been used for extractable and leachable analysis that we believe can give greater insight into the identification of unknowns in very simple workflows. <coughs> so uh, three parts really to the presentation today. I'm going to show you a case study where we looked at some pharmaceutical grade O-rings with a whole suite of different technologies and capabilities. And I'm going to introduce some brand new technology that, that's never been used, as I mentioned. And my colleague Kate is going to demonstrate the uh, capabilities and advantages of high resolution, accurate mass, mass spectrometry uh, for the analysis and identification of unknown extractable impurities. So I won't go into any background on extractables and leachables. I'm sure there are many people in the audience with, uh, who have forgotten far more about extractables than I will ever know. But I think the one thing is is, is key from all of the industry body guidance and regulatory guidance is that you really do require a suite of analytical technologies to, to complement and identify uh, uh, extractables which can, can take various different chemical forms. So in general there is a requirement for volatile analysis, semi-volatile analysis, non-volatiles and, and elemental impurity analysis. And I think it's fairly sa safe to say that Conventionally, mass spectrometry has really led the way in identifying unknowns. And as instrument vendors, we recognize that many people within the industry have reached out to us in the past um, requiring additional capabilities. So there has been a, a general movement from, from mass spectrometry to high resolution mass spectrometry, both for LC and GC amenable compounds. Uh, Often, often complemented with orthogonal detection, such as, such as UV, or more, more frequently today, we see charged aerosol detection as a, as a universal detector for, for uh, unknowns. So we're going to present uh, two or three of these, these uh, analytical technologies today, but it's fair to say that the, the, beyond the analytical technologies, there are requirements for, for additional peripheral technology to support extractables and leachables workflows. And, and we can support that right the way through from, from the extraction step all the way through to the very ultra-pure reagents and vials that, that really give you a, a zero-level background when performing your analytical test. Okay, so to take a look at the case study, we worked uh, in collaboration with, uh, with Smithers, uh, who were able to um, provide us with a series of pharmaceutical grade O-ring extracts um, that we then analysed with three different technologies. So uh, for our non-volatiles analysis, I know many, many of the laboratories in the room are very familiar with our Orbitrap-based uh, mass spectrometry technology in particular the QXactive series instruments. These have been around for a number of years and have been, been used to great success for identifying unknowns. For the first time this year, we launched an instrument in, in uh, June at ASMS. Uh, it's the, the brother, really, of the, the LC variant QXactive. It's a, a GC MSMS system um, with very unique capabilities. So we, we analysed all of the extracts using these three technologies, including a quadrupole-based ICPMS. So just a, a brief uh, overview of what we did. Uh, we loosely followed the BPOG guidelines from last year. We took the, the O-rings, weighed them out into, into vials. Uh, we, we chose a, a subset really just for brevity of the, the analytical process of solvents to use. It, it really is just a case study, not an exhaustive study. Um, and we held them at uh, elevated temperatures for, for 30 days and then, then analysed them. Fairly standard analytical process. Um, those familiar with GCMS will, will, will see that we, we used fairly typical um, testing conditions. I would say we, we operated the system up at 60,000 resolutions. So this is, a, this is a, a resolution that 
really can't be matched from any other technology on the market. But the, the system itself can go, go faster than that and, and at higher resolution than that. And then we process the data in a, in a new automated data um, processing software. So what is the system? Well, it comprises three uh, key established robust technologies that we, we brought together almost like Frankenstein into one, one nice package. And uh, we, we have an established GC system, a truly modular system that allows multiple different injector, uh, injector modules to be dropped into the top, um, headspace, program temperature, vaporization, so on, all that great tech that people know and love. And then we, behind that, we have a, an ionization source that we developed for environmental analysis, actually. People who wanted to, to run robust sediments for weeks on end with ever, without ever having to clean their, their instrument. Um, so this was the most robust source we've ever made. We're very proud of it, and we, we were sure to include it within this system. And then behind that, the, the QX active uh, high-resolution GC, uh, or orbitrap-based mass spectrometer. So inside the, the mass spec itself, we have a, a, a quadrupole that kicks ions into what we call a C trap. And we can do a, a very elegant iron dance. And we can move them, select a mass if we want, or we let all the masses through. We store them up, and then we spit them into our orbit trap to do the very high resolution analysis. But we can dance them into what we call a HCD cell to do very complex and, and uh, um, fragmentation experiments and then kick them back into the orbit trap. And we can move these through in an automated way, uh, data directed and automated as the, the analysis proceeds. So what does the system give you? As I mentioned, it's, it's 120,000 resolution, which, which seems an obscene number. But that kind of resolution allows you to really clean up spectra. You can, you can deconvolve spectra. Um, and have a very clean spectra without any background ions. That means your library search is more effective and you get higher quality identifications. We also have an exceptional level of mass accuracy. I've got a few slides where I deep delve into this, but we, we in routine run at one ppm mass accuracy and, and the value of that is explained in the next few slides. But in reality, what this means is you have less uh, identification options and higher degree of confidence in your identification of your unknown. And we're able to do very, very low sensitivity analyses. So down from the very low femtogram up to the high nanogram in a single run. What does this mean? In reality, you don't need to dilute extracts to do a quantification experience of a high peak, but you can still identify a tiny little trace extractable in one run, unlike on other technologies where you have to set up a, a more elegant and complex analytical sequence. So this is a, a GC peak of, a, of an extractable from one of our O-rings. And what we've done is we've shown every single spectrum across that GC peak. So this is acquired at 60,000 resolution. And we can see we have plenty of, of scans across the peak. And every single scan is uh, less than 1 ppm mass accuracy. So other high resolution technologies, they would need to take an average across the peak to come up with a, a mass accuracy result. And that in, in itself introduces errors. Um, whereas we can take any peak and have confidence in, in that mass accuracy result. So as I mentioned, it's exceptionally sensitive. So this is a test that we, it's a system suitability test. We can run it every day on every system um, and, uh, and guarantee. So this is 10 femtograms on column. Um, and we run that. You can see we never see any noise, so signal-to-noise experiment really doesn't make any sense. So what we just ask for is replicate analysis of this, and then you take a, a confidence limit. So we, we have a, a limit of detection on this system down in a very low single femtograms. And this is in full scan all the time, all the data all the time. So no, no requirement to do to MRM-type experiments, even in high matrix. And again, as I mentioned, it's linear over a very wide range. So unlike uh, Toft technology with ADC or TDC detectors, you'd normally see some form of saturation at the high end. Uh, we don't see that on this system at all. We, we are, this is 10 femtograms, right the way up to 10 nanograms, perfectly linear. 
So effectively, that just means less analyses, more time in the lab. Uh, and the beauty of this is this is a mass accuracy plot over the same dynamic range. And we never leave that one ppm. And this is absolutely unheard of. Very, very high concentrated peaks, one ppm right across the range. So all of that technology is normally fairly complex. Uh, and we work very, very hard to ensure that it isn't. So from, from start up to analysis, it's one minute. And you can really set your clock by it. It performs all of the instrument setup, uh, quality checks, leak checking, all of this kind of stuff with a single button on the system um, so that you're off and running with very little user interference. OK, so that's the system. Let's take a look at some of the data. So to analyze the data at Thermo Fisher Scientific, we've got a range of, of software suites dependent on customer requirements and, and needs. Um, I'm going to be talking about TraceFinder, which comes as standard with our QExactive GC instrument. So this is both for quantitation and uh, unknown ID, or quantformation as we like to call it. My colleague Kate will talk uh, a little bit about uh, Compound Discoverer, and we have a very nice presentation scheduled this afternoon on, on a new uh, uh, cloud-based library that I won't go into any detail here. But all of these technologies can hook in together. And uh, it depends on your analytical workflow for exactly what you need. TraceFind is very simple to use. It's designed for the environmental market, for, for, for operators without a, a high degree of experience in mass spectrometry. So it performs an automated deconvolution of all the complex high resolution mass spec data and then uh, gets an ultra clean spectrum because of the high resolution and does a library search and then has some nice uh, proprietary um, accurate mass filtering algorithms that give you more confidence in the result. So as I mentioned, deconvolve, clean the spectrum, nice clean spectrum, and identify the candidate from the library search. So one of the algorithms underneath the hood is uh, what we call a HRF scoring algorithm. It's, it's fairly simple, actually. It's a high-resolution filtering score. So when you identify the molecular ion, um, that gives you some information, but you've got all that nice fragment iron information that you, you don't want to lose. And that, that really gives you the confidence in the analysis. So all of these fragments also have exceptionally low mass error. So what we do is we, we take the proposed formulae from our library search, and we take a look at every peak that we find observed within the spectrum that can be explained by that proposed empirical formulae, and we divide it by all of the unexplained peaks. So it's quite simple, but the result of that means that we get a HRF score with, with a perfect score being 100, but combining that with the library, library fit, it gives an exceptional confidence in ID. So here's just an example of how the software works. Generally, you're running some kind of blank or standard or control with some internal standards. So here's just an example of our, our blank control from our O-rings and, and one, of the, one of the results. I think it's fair, fairly clear to see that there were some extractables. So the software, as I mentioned, does an accurate mass deconvolution. So um, all of the ions are pulled out. They're, they're found to, um, the retention times are all perfectly aligned and those ions are built up into our spectrum, our nice clean spectrum. It then library searches that spectrum. But you can very easily compare series and batches of controls versus replicates of, of your sample. Um, and it's very simple. We've not gone into complex, detailed, principal component analysis. Customers just said, well, I have this bunch of samples. I want to compare it to this bunch of samples. Tell me the differences. So that's what we did. We heat mapped the differences out so that you can just go to the peaks that are maybe above your analytical evaluation threshold. And, and identify just those peaks. So what you can do is you can rank the results um, by a fold difference to a blank or a control or a, a gold standard sample and really just pull out the differences very quickly, numerically and visually from a heat map. So you end up with a result. You get a, a list of proposed matches and a high resolution filtering score. So as I mentioned, what, what does that give you? Well, the library match here, the SI, if we take a look at this particular example, 
There were two fairly high library match scores, one on row three, one on row one. So on a nominal mass in instrument, you'd have to do a bit more uh, investigative work to work out which one was the, the true match. Maybe it involved some retention time data, maybe some, some pre-knowledge of the sample. But our HRF scores are very different because in this sample, in this analyte, sorry, there were spectra, spectral ions that weren't uh, explainable by the proposed empirical formulae. Consequently, as a low HRF score, the combination of these two gives a, a combined score that really would uh, tell you that there's only one option for that analyte. And again, what we're able to do with MSMS that can be automated is you can take that molecular ion, you can fragment it up again if you want for absolute confidence in that. So here's a fragment ion spectra of that molecular ion with the results showing all of the, the mass errors significantly below 1 ppm. So what about when you don't have a library hit? So how do you identify an unknown um, without, without that additional backup resource of a library. So it, this happens quite frequently, um, but what you're able to do is use orthogonal ionization techniques very, very quickly. So we move from electron ionization to chemical ionization within a period of about two minutes, and this is real, you're often, often running. Um, we run these samples together with, with Smithers, uh, same day, same lab, within, within about half an hour of each other. So you're then able to take the CI data, and if you want, you can fragment that up again for additional information. So here's our EI spectrum of this unknown, molecular ion, and the molecular ion is proven with the, the formation of the adducts in CI. And then additionally, we can do fragment ion um, analysis of that CI molecular ion. So I've gone on about the mass accuracy for a long time and, and, uh, and probably repeatedly, but this is the real true value because that mass accuracy on most instruments on, on the market would sit around six to maybe 10, some around 20 ppm um, on, on time of flight uh, instrumentation down at these low molecular weights. In reality, at one ppm, um, the analysis of this unknown really would give you only one elemental composition. So within, within the period of, of a few seconds, you have a very high confidence um, elemental composition result to work with for, a, for an unknown that's not in your library. So I won't go into all of the, the peaks that we were able to identify, but there were, there were numerous. We, we, we found a lot of stuff in these, these O-rings that are pharmaceutical grade, and we're going to put out a a comprehensive series of reports on this, but um, fairly, fairly easily and with a high degree of confidence, we could rapidly identify um, a whole range. So then what we did is we took a look at the elemental um, analysis, so the, the metals within the same samples. So we took the samples and we analyzed it by quadrupole-based ICPMS. So this is our thermoscientific uh, ICAP-Q series, ICPMS instrument. So it comes together with a, a fully compliant um, software tool called uh, Qtegra. And it all also has inbuilt um, reporting and uh, QA and QC checking capabilities that can be automated within the software for, for USP or the, the USP guidelines in, in draft for 232, 233 and the ICHQ Q3D uh, guidelines. So we, we analysed these uh, just uh, by direct infusion. The 100% um, organic extracts we, we partially evaporated and made up with ultra-pure water. They were all acidified before analysis. Uh, the analysis itself, all of the QAQC checks are automated within a sample list. So there's no user intervention to get this. It's a, it's a press a button and go. It tests all of your calibration range, the linear dynamic range, the, the sensitivity verification, the, the, the accuracy check, and it also monitors drift across the day to ensure that all of the QC criteria are, are reported for the data. It probably doesn't come as much as a surprise to, to many of you who are more familiar with this area than I. There wasn't a high degree of metals that, that were extracted from the O-rings, thankfully, but at 
exceptionally low levels, we were with a high degree of confidence able to, to detect uh, traces of antimony, of arsenic, of, of uh, lead within them. They were all in the, in the salt, uh, uh, high content salt extracts. Um, there was very little in the organic extracts. And again, as I mentioned, we, we automated all of the drift checking and QC throughout the entire sequence of the day. The, the software kicks out an automated report. So with that, I'm going to pass to my colleague, uh, Kate, who will go through some of our LC data. I'm going to talk very quick talk about the uh, uh, LCMS analysis. Uh, okay. I think uh, what we are here, uh, you know, try to figure out that this, uh, you know, how do we do the email analysis better? I have to say, from my own experience, you know, email analysis is become a mainstream and routine. We got a lot, of, you know, requests from customer. You know, I've been asked our experts here because we are instrumental company, right? For all those. Uh, talk study, all those, uh, you know, uh, how to do the evaluation is out of, you know, my knowledge, but, you know, our customer keep asking us, so I can feel, right, that there are more and more email coming up. So I think uh, we are all the, um, you know, piece of uh, this big puzzle. And uh, for the instrument analysis, it's very important piece, because based on that, you do your toxicology assess, uh, assessment and the eventual uh, new drug application finding and put your product on the market. So um, I have to say, before I came here, we had a meeting with uh, one of the arguably biggest, the best pharmaceutical company. Uh, just uh, less than two years ago, they had the drug, uh, drug very good cancer fighting drug, but strike down by FDA. It's the stability issue. So at this point, they're not sure it's a formulation or it's a, you know, leachable. So we're working with them. You know, it's, it's a shame, right? They spent so much time, effort, and uh, now uh, couldn't uh, put this product on the market, you know. So that tells us the high stakes were in their analysis. I know a lot of you here are expert, but we just try to you know, review some of the basics. And as we all know, except the carbon-12, most elements, you know, all the elements, that are, you know, atomic weights are now the integral, right? More than half elements on the periodic table uh, have uh, uh, stable isotopes. Those sta stable isotopes uh, have uh, three unique properties. One, they have a, a unique uh, atomic weight, right? How accurate depends on how many uh, decimal points you want to use. And secondly, they have their unique relative abundance. Third, the mass difference to the most abundant is fixed. So this unique properties we call nature's fingerprint. Also, Electron mass, right? Elect normally we don't think about it, but you know it's very important when you try to do your uh, exact mass calculation. So for those you know hair splitting details, it's not our concern normally. But when you try to figure out the unknown structure of your extract literature, the first thing you need to do is try to determine the right the elemental composition. Those are the exact information you need, and those information can only be obtained by high resolution mass spec. So this is actually, I borrowed this uh, from in, uh, uh, um, our colleague, Alexander Makarov. So this is the, uh, you know, the analyze can be seen by different instrument, right? They are similar, but they are alike, but which one do you prefer? I think the answer is obvious. But most importantly, which one you have to have in order to get your job done right. So this is just a simple example for us, 
a mixture of uh, two small molecule compound at about the one to three ratio. Uh, at seventeen point five k, uh, we can't separate. Right, thirty uh, five k, we can partially separate. Seventy k, baseline separated. At one hundred forty thousand resolution, they are complete baseline separated. Also with sub ppm mass accuracy. On top of that, you didn't sacrifice any the intensity, which is very important when you do high resolution quantitation, right? By the way, this is acquired by the Q on Q executive. We call Q executive is a quant call machine, right? You can do high resolution quantitation very easily. Um, <clears throat> just by mass accuracy, it's not enough to arrive unique elemental composition, right? Because in, when you have a higher molecule weight than 400, 500, you know that even though you have a one ppm mass uh, error, uh, the possible elemental composition can increase dramatically. Therefore, we need a second orthogonal filter to figure out the right, uh, you know, the unique elemental combination. So this is just an example. Uh, this compound pyrazine and has, you know, we, uh, we plot this, uh, the isotope distribution uh, under different uh, resolution, right? As we can see, you know, only at the 240K resolution, you start to see all those fine fingerprint, right? Uh, this is, so this is a very important, uh, people always talk about the accurate math, sure, that's important, but when you deal with unknown, you have to have this. Remember isobaric, right? So, but this fingerprint is unique for, you know, one compound. So even though they are molecular weight are very close, sometimes even, even almost exactly the same, but those as fine as top structures are different. So uh, this is a real example we acquired. This is for impurity ID, right? Uh, I'm just trying to blow up this uh, peak. And then if you just take a look at the uh, A2 uh, isotope peak, you know, we can clearly see the split between sulfur 34 and uh, carbon-13. But if you run this same example under 500,000 resolution, you can see more, right? You can see the nitrogen-15, oxygen-18, right? So that's why we say you, you have a high-resolution mass back, you know, give you all those benefits, you know, horizontally, you know what kind of elements present in your unknown. In the out. and then vertically, by their relative abundance, you can calculate how many, right? So that's, that's why uh, we say you can do item counting, right? Okay, uh, we are all too familiar with 391, but now the, all the 391 are the usual suspect, right? Only high resolution mass spec can tell. So this is actually uh, the, the real problem I had when I work at the Roche Palato. So we have this, you know, right away, so, oh yeah, this is the valley, right? The common LC background. Look at this dimer, look at this uh, associated, right? But right away, so, oh, wait a minute, the mass doesn't match, right? So, uh, if we zoom in, take a look, right? This peak, actually, this pair, we have two pairs of peaks. This pair are the, my impurity. And then the real valley is here. And also, I would like to draw your attention to this. This is the sulfur uh, 34 peak. So, you know, when we take a look at the elemental, the um, isotope simulation, it's very clear. They are different, right? By combined with MS mass uh, fragment, you know, we quickly uh, come up the structure. So I can't show you though. Okay, so this year is 10th anniversary of Orbitrap technology. Within these 10 years, this Orbitrap technology really, you know, 
advanced leaps by leaps and bounces. So in today's OP-TRAP technology, the instrument will have a higher resolving power, is more sensitive, higher scan speed, mass algorithm, so on and so forth. On the other hand, the usability is up to, right? It's a small footprint bench top. And we have a tone vaser, we have a measure template. All you need to do is a drag and drop, build up your measure. And it's robust and basically plug and play, right? So this is an arbitrary mass spec we have, right? So fit all the budget and the applications. Uh, we just waiting the queue exactly like a uh, uh, side we have a series, right? So um, I'll just quickly go through the uh, analysis for the O-ring, right? I did uh, the uh, LCMS on the uh, queue exactly plus, and it's very simple, right? We just, you know, shoot in and then got the whole bunch of data. The important thing I want to say here is the comma discover 2.0. This is the, our, uh, our own, okay, yeah, another thing I want to point out, sorry, uh, is a uh, um, compound that uh, discover 2.0, uh, we can do unknown impurity analysis very easy because we have the MD cloud and we have this homemade, um, uh, we simply call it the mass list, which is common in your compounds uh, database, and also you can do a chem spider search. So, uh, this is a, a, my spec uh, method, very simple. You know, this, we call this a generic uh, high, re high resolution uh, uh, screening method. You just uh, full scan top three MS mass and then, you know, we can do polar switching on the fly, right? And then you just uh, drag drop all the icon here and then specify the mass range and resolution you want, you're ready to go. Normally, Data process is always a, a bottleneck, right? With the compound discover 2.0 bottleneck, no more. This one is a, a thermal made, yeah, with advanced, uh, you know, customizable, very flexible, uh, you know, workflow. And for the uh, one zero, we do no no parent compound impurity ID. But for 2.0, 2 we can do unknown, right? So which is great news for in the old folks. And then in this one, we uh, incorporate the safe differential analysis algorithm. And also we have this wonderful mass frontier software which can do spectral interpretation through the fragmentation that include in this software. We have MD Cloud the only one high resolution spectral database. So uh, Robert, the CEO of HiCam, gonna give us talk this afternoon. And also we have, like I said, we simply call it a mass list. This is the, some of the common in our compound. Uh, we accumulated, right now we have about 1,500. This is how the um, you know, compound discover look, right? Uh, on the left, you have all those notes, right? You can just uh, basically need the drag and the drop, put here, and then this is all your sample. So by the way, you know, we did uh, uh, four different uh, uh, O-rings extraction, extracted you know, the four different solvent, and then we did uh, uh, like a duplication. So everything is there. And then this is just, uh, you know, show you the workflow. So. This is a very powerful software. It's versatile, it's flexible, yet easy to use. Normally, when the software is powerful, it's hard to use. Not, not for compound discover, right? And we have, uh, uh, if you don't want to spend the time at the beginning, you simply can use the build. We have a, a wizard there. You know, all you need to do is uh, follow the Wizard use a building template, you know, literally 15 minutes, you can start to process your data. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I want to say this, you know, uh, we have this uh, ChemSpider and the uh, Mesli search and the uh, MZ Cloud search incorporate this. So this is uh, excellent for the ENL unknown impurity ID. 
Okay, uh, this is how the result look like. We have a different uh, tables here, and we have the chromatogram and the my spec, and the, look at the color. The color means whatever the identified compound, right? The software automatically calculate the isotope distribution. If within the three ppm window, if the mass is not the right, will color code it in the right. In this case, I have green, so I'm okay, right? So this is, I was talking about, you know, you have to have a, a spectral accuracy, right? Or isotope fidelity. And for, the, for this particular experiment, uh, you know, you can view your result in whichever way you like in uh, compound discover, right? This is the, you know, ORIN A in four different solutions. I want to see how they behave uh, in different solutions. See, right away, I can tell, right? And, or I want to see all the O-rings behave in one extraction solution, 50%. I said, no, in this case, here you go, right? And also, of course, we have the uh, PCA, whatever. So those are all on your finger clip. So this is the, uh, you know, uh, result for the uh, MD cloud, right? Give you the list when you click the compound and give you the uh, mirror plot. Uh, on the top is the uh, experimental result. This is, is um, you know, the reference spectra in the database. So right away, you can evaluate, right? And uh, if you click on the uh, MD Cloud ID number, and then we'll bring the MD Cloud website up, right? So this is really great. And also we have this mass list, right? Right now, we don't have a structure. Yeah, our uh, colleague in Bremen uh, work on it, try to put a structure there. So this is just over the time, you know, we saw those common email compound. We said, okay, let's make a list. So that's uh, how it's come from. And also, you can do cam spider search. You select your data source, whichever you want, and then you know, give you the list. Uh, this is the website for this software, right? Called, simply called mycomadiscover.com, right? From here, uh, you can download the demo version, free demo version for 60 days. And you can uh, watch the tutorial video, learn how to use it. And you can put your suggesting complaint or compliment, right? So our wonderful team will get back to you, yeah, very quick. I have, I have to mention this uh, uh, quantitation capability of a coexistive, right? We know this. Uh, this is you know one of the antioxidant, right? Simply we just made the solution and run post-time switching, make sure you know the mass is right sure enough, right? We got the very good mass accuracy. And then this is the uh, positive, we use the ammonia in the eye, right? You know, we get the excellent uh, you know linearity. This is the three uh, triplet injection and then the C V and diff are exceptionally good. Right, and the same for the negative eye mode. Uh, so with that, um, I'm going to hand this back to Kyle. So hopefully we've been able to, to show you some of the capabilities for really identifying uh, these, these extractables to leave, to leave you with no unknowns in your, in your uh, reports. We've presented GC and LC Orbitrap technology for, for this. We've also shown some empowering and new uh, software workflows. As Kate mentioned, Compound Discover is, is available, Compound Discoverer 2, available and shipping in December. And Trace Finder is already out there and, and on sale. We've shown some online cloud-based libraries that, that uh, um, Hikem are gonna present in more detail today, but uh, we've just touched upon those. And we also presented out the data from, from the ICPMS. So before I close, and, and thank you for this, I just want to do a bit of promotion because, well, that's what we do. Um, uh, there was a great webinar last week from, from our chair here. If any of you want to catch it on demand, you can now at, uh, at this, this uh, URL, bit.ly 
forward slash identify leachables. There's also another webinar that really deep dives into the GC Orbi trap and LC Orbi trap for, for um, uh, leachables and, and extractables in December. You can register on the same website there. And if you need to, to find out any more information, as Kate said, it's on the mug. And we've, we've actually over-ordered on the mug, so if anybody wants some <laughs> outside, I don't want to take them home, I have a garage full, so <laughs> please help yourself. And the URL on the mug, you can find a, a lot of great data. So I'd, with that, I'd just like to thank our collaborators who provided all the samples and, and did all of the work in the lab, and uh, thank you all for your attention. <laughs>